Hello and welcome. It's Friday, so it's time for my news rep. News from the world of SAP, Microsoft and the world in between. Now let's see what this week had for us. Let's start with uh, the, the SAP news as usual. Um, here is a very, very interesting and nice blog post uh, that, that crossed my path um, in context of Rise with SAP. Um, it was published by an, by an SAP partner that's called Cubioid, um, which kind of, of uh, summarizes or gives some, some FAQ-like um, explanation of Rise with SAP. And what I really like is it's um, kind of not just marketing fluff. Um, it really um, discusses the points around um, Rise with SAP that you really have to think about. Um, especially what I, what I, for example, like is that they highlight the topic of, um, of this, let's say, uh, a pricing uh, um, that, that, that is always stressed by SAP, that the TCO is, is just great. Um, they they have a kind of a of a more well well educated view on that if 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 that's not too offensive to say um, for example with respect to the uh, contract topics because with rise with SAP you have to to switch your contract which is not necessarily um, um, the thing when you do a, a migration on on premise you could stay on your in your old contract. Now you really have to, to move to the full use equivalent model, um, which kind of can make sense, but kind of can be more expensive um, for you. So that's um, yeah, quite interesting to see, a quite interesting read uh, around um, the topic rise with SAP. So if, if you are interested in that, I highly recommend to read this blog post. Then um, there was um, another uh, CTO Q&A um, hosted by the SAP community, uh, which was a follow-up. I think it's now a regular session with uh, Jürgen Müller that's um, coming out, I think, every three months, I, I have the impression, um, which was quite interesting. It was kind of half an hour um, where Jürgen Müller kind of guided through the news and the topics that, um, that he thinks is, is worth to address. And then there was, I think, half an hour of, of really Q&A that, that was a moderated Q&A um, with, with different questions. There was quite some news around a business technology platform. And there was some statement about uh, open sourcing uh, the cloud application programming model. And there was also a statement about the free tiering, which will come this year. Um, it will come, um, I think, later this year. I guess Sapphire will be the time where it will be announced. But the free tiering will, as a first step, only be available for customers. So don't expect to have it on the, on the trial. You have to, to be a customer. As far as I understood what um, uh, Jürgen Müller uh, announced within this uh, Q&A. Then uh, there was another announcement um, in this Q&A that kind of, of crossed my path more or less by incident. Um, SAP did not do too much um, ado around um, that, but I think that was awaited for a long time by the community, and that was pay as you go for SAP Business Technology Platform. Because up to now, um, you had different types of contracts. I think the, the um, most interesting cloudish uh, contract was the uh, Cloud Platform Enterprise Agreement. And uh, where you had kind of a prepaid uh, um, card model. Um, and this is now really a, a, a real pay-as-you-go model for the SAP Business Technology Platform. It's available. So as you can see here, it's officially uh, available on the SAP Store. Um, you, can, you can sign up. I, I did not go through, but it seems like you can really um, do that at a, at a low-touch way. So you do not have to contact... SAP sells for that. So that's something that came out. I, I don't know why SAP didn't push that, that heavily, but um, well, at least we have it now. Then um, another topic around um, SAP Cloud Platform, uh, SAP Business Technology Platform, I apologize, um, 
as you, you might have seen if you are regularly using the, the business technology platform, there, there's a lot of UI stuff going on that they um, redo, that they change um, at SAP. And now the, the business technology platform trial accounts now also display your HTML5 applications again. So it's very easy to access them and to, to go to the, um, uh, the logs of that um, stuff. So, um, yeah, I think they, they are improving some things within the business technology platform cockpit. I also think there are some things that they, well, kind of over-engineered, but I think it really depends um, how often you use it. You get used to the stuff, but this is really helpful, I think, for those who, who are using HTML5 applications on SAP business technology platform. Then um, I want to highlight another blog post by Walter Lemaire. Um, I already had the, the, the first one um, here within my news rip. It's again about splitting uh, multi-target applications into backend and frontend parts. Um, the first blog post was about using the uh, managed app router offering on SAP Cloud Platform. Now there are scenarios where you do not have that managed um, app router offering within your tenant. So you might want to use the standalone app router. Um, the, the kind of um, constraints um, when you might run into the standalone app router topic are also described here within this blog post. So again, a quite um, extensive description, what you have to do, what you have to configure with respect to splitting those MTA applications and deploying them and having them run on the um, business technology platform. Now with that, let's switch to the um, cloud application programming model. There was uh, one tweet by uh, Maxi Streifmeder around um, the combination of cloud application programming model and the event mesh, how it's called now. So the um, SAP um, messaging component on the business technology platform. Uh, you have to, to check the release notes that I uh, highlighted last week, that there is some, some default implementation that kind of might um, um, mess up your, um, your old implementation. So please, please check that if you are using the combination of um, Cloud Application Programming Model and Event Mesh, because um, there are changes. Now, another topic within the area of uh, Cloud Application Programming Model is that the, I think that the community is really doing more and more. And there is one um, contribution uh, around the uh, around CSV uh, generation, in order to to speed up um, the the initial CSV files to to um, well, load into your application, and there is now one generator for that that is contributed by the uh, by the community. And if you go on that link, don't be surprised. At least for me, it took many many seconds until I saw this overview section where this. Um, um, contribution or this um, um, OpenYSX uh, file is is described. I don't know why that took so long, but uh, so so don't don't get nervous. It will appear after some seconds. Now, picking up this topic and picking up the the Q and A of Holger Müller that I mentioned just a few seconds ago. I hope that um, SAP is really heavily thinking about open sourcing a cloud application programming model as a whole. Um, because I think the community is really active, is really um, engaging around the topic. And I think if they really um, want to, to keep that moving, open sourcing cup would be the, the best way to engage with the community and to, to bring things forward. So as, as we can see, there are now a, really a lot of people contributing there. Now, um, that was it for the SAP side um, of the house. So uh, no news from Kima, from ABAP Steampunk or, or any other things that crossed my path. Um, hopefully something, some news about Kima will come out uh, soon because I'm really interested in that. Now um, let's switch to Microsoft. Um, as I said last week, there have been quite some announcement around um, Azure Functions and now we have kind of the, the aftermath of this announcement. There are some blog posts that come out. And one that is especially interesting for um, Azure Functions users 
that use the .NET environment and want to switch to .NET 5, um, which is now kind of available. Well, at least they, they support it now also in production. There is a rather extensive blog post uh, describing why it took some time to, to keep, to get things running with um, .NET 5 and how the way forward is. So they really opened up um, their, their um, roadmap when they, they want to support what and to what extent. Because as you if you are in the .NET universe, um, you might be aware that .NET 5 is not a, a long-term support release. This will be .NET 6. It will probably uh, be released in November this year. Um, so currently, the I, I think the um, um, the effort goes now into supporting um, .NET uh, 6 in the future. But there is quite some things that they they have to do um, because .NET was kind of a special citizen within Azure Functions, so they behave differently um, with respect to all the other uh, programming language. But now they are kind of aligned, which which also means that some um, binding types, for example, will not be supported out of the box with, with .NET 5. But that's all described within this blog post. So if you're working in that area, um, take, take a look at it. And it's really highly appreciated that Microsoft is opening up their, um, their, their internal roadmaps and what they want to do and why they do things like they do it in that way. So that's really cool. And then there is another blog post for those who want uh, to use uh, durable functions uh, with Python. As I announced last week, um, uh, the, the uh, durable functions for Python will now be GA. And this is the blog post that describes that describes this, this topic and how you can use that. And um, it also describes why um, Microsoft is thinking that it's it's a, a valuable addition to the, um, to the Python uh, runtime on Azure Functions to use durable functions, especially in the context of machine learning. Um, yeah, then let's move on with Azure Functions. Last week, I um, highlighted the repo of Mark Duke around the Azure Functions challenge, where he uh, put uh, this, this notify support flow uh, that he implemented um, on, on GitHub. And now there is also a video available, which walks you through um, this, this topic. Um, and walks you through the implementation. So that's really cool. Um, if you if you want to have a, a guided experience there, um, Mark is doing really a great job. And there was, Mark was busy this week, I guess. Um, he had also a talk about uh, dealing with complex workflows in Azure Functions. So again, durable functions at the Dutch Cloud Meetup. And the slides are available at um, Speaker Deck. So if you're interested in that, um, they are quite self-explanatory. So yeah, another contribution to the great world of Azure Durable Functions. Now there is another blog post that I want to, to bring to your attention. It's not brand new, uh, but I kind of missed it. And I think it's quite use useful. Um, it's running multiple Azure Functions locally. Because if you run um, Azure Functions locally, there is some, some default uh, port on, on the local host that it's, that the function is exposed as an endpoint. And if you want to run two Azure functions, the second one will run into an error. And this blog post tells you how to come around that and run the uh, multiple functions at different endpoints. It's, it's not difficult, it's not rocket science, but um, I think it's good to know um, how this works. Now, I also have some more news um, from, let's say, the, the um, not serverless world, uh, but I think they are really uh, worth to mention. Point one is um, around event-driven key vault secret rotation. That's something that I guess will cross your path if you manage your uh, secrets within Azure Key Vault and you want to rotate those secrets. Um, here is one description of how to do that. And kind of a, of a I wouldn't say best practice, but kind of a very um, sophisticated approach how to do that, making use of, um, of course, Key Vault, um, um, Logic Apps, and Azure Functions in order to um, 
exchange not not all your secrets but uh, only perhaps a subset of secrets at a certain point in time so again as you see azure functions not only um, very valuable or logic apps and azure functions not only very valuable uh, in the area of application development but i think there is a bunch of things that you can do in order to automate your your ops stuff with with those features and tools so that's really cool then um of course, the 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 um, Dapper one point zero uh, GA announcement is kind of making its tour. So I want to highlight here another um, podcast that um, has this topic as central um, um, central thing to announce, um, where uh, Mark Fassel talks about Dapper one point zero at the Azure DevOps podcast. So if you're working with Dapper, if you have not yet watched any other video around Dapper 1.0, well, then listen to this podcast to know what's now possible with that. Then I have two more things uh, from the um, Kubernetes world. So that's quite fitting to Dapper. Um, there is a new episode of the uh, Cloud Native Club. Um, it's it's um, a German format. From, from the Microsoft developers, uh, um, developer community from Germany, um, but were very valuable. And this time it's around um, making AKS production ready in a quite quick time, making use of the locomotive platform, um, which um, really focuses on, on bringing up your cluster in a production ready state, especially with respect to um, security and with respect to managing updates within the uh, Kubernetes cluster. Uh, that's that's quite interesting. Would also be interesting to compare that to um, the uh, Gardener approach, being well aware of that this, I think, is AKS specific. And then there was another um, cool episode of the uh, format Azure Kubernetes Service Zero to Hero that I, I think highlighted a few times now in, in my news wrap. But this one was special. This was not walking through um, some some deployment or something like that, or how you do things. This was uh, ask us anything, and um, as you can see from the description, uh, I think that was the first uh, episode of of this format. So you could uh, put questions in in the chat. You could uh, um, provide them in advance via via social media like Twitter, and then uh, Gregor and uh, Richard, who host this format answered them. That's really interesting. It was really interesting. And um, especially for those who start with um, AKS, I think it's really valuable to, to, to go through that because there are some questions that probably you have asked yourself, um, like, how do you start? How do you, uh, should you use AKS? Or should you really do, um, let's say, Kubernetes from scratch on, on, on a Raspberry Pi cluster or something? Okay, then um, one more thing from the um, pure Microsoft world. Um, very interesting blog post around the Azure communication services um, that have been um, announced in the um, Microsoft Ignite, where um, you, you have this, this services kind of that are yeah, like, like the bits and pieces of um, of teams like, like chat, like uh, calling uh, somebody um, or ma making video calls and that you can now use separately without having to have uh, teams in place. And you can integrate that within your applications and within this blog post, it's all around um, bringing them into, I think, um, um, uh, an existing application and making use of, of them it's a very decent walkthrough uh, that topic so if you are starting with this i think that's really valuable that really helps you to gain speed um i'm also looking forward to see how this thing will evolve in the area of sap and microsoft because this is really something that um where i think there are some really cool use cases around that when you integrate those services into your sap application into your fiori app for example yeah, with that, um, we leave the pure um, Microsoft news block and switch over to the SAP and Microsoft news block, so the world in between. 
And there are quite some news around that. Um, I announced, I think I mentioned that a few weeks ago that uh, there is um, a webinar by, by Holger Bruchelt on extending SAP solutions with the Microsoft Power Platform. Um, you can still register to that uh, event and uh, watch this webinar on demand. But what's even better is uh, you can um, take a look at, at the, the bits and pieces that have been um, discussed within this webinar in, I think, a bit more detail than, than it was in the webinar all around uh, this um, YouTube playlist that I referenced in the show notes. Let's start from um, preparing uh, the Power Platform and SAP in order to make use of them, then creating Power Apps using custom connectors to the SAP, and then also digging into some quite cool uh, features of the Power Platform like the AI Builder or like the uh, Q&A Maker. There are really uh, quite powerful services within the Power Platform that make your life easier um, and, and give you incredible development speed if you use them, of course, with some limitations as low-code platforms have. But that's quite great that um, Holger Bruchelt brought that forward. And I think there was quite some work behind that to, to record that. Then um, sticking with um, Holger Bruchelt's um, SAP on Azure activities, there was also a new video podcast as every uh, Friday or Saturday um, this one all around principle propagation. And if you're watching this, um, you will see now um, one very, very, very well-known person all around there um, that um, yeah, does the, the security stuff at Microsoft now um, when it comes to SAP and Microsoft combination. That's Martin Repler, um, who, yeah, walks you through his, I think, I would say blog post series that he brought up at the SAP community that I also referenced in, in prior uh, sessions around the topic of principal propagation. And especially uh, one, one special topic is um, the, the combination of teams and um, uh, uh, teams and, and SAP, how to, to bring those stuff together. That's, I think, quite new. That was the latest blog post. But as you can see here, from the um, outline of the video, he really walks you through everything. So quite appreciated to, to have this, this session recorded because I think it's always easier to, to watch and do things than just going through the blog post. Now, um, one, one further announcement around uh, Teams and, and uh, integrating Microsoft Teams with SAP, there is a blog post um, that came out uh, yesterday, um, who shows how you can make use of um, Microsoft Detective Cards within MS Teams and integrating them with SAP. I think it's um, a vacation approval, so it's a kind of a, of a classical scenario that you can use. And within this blog post, you get at least an idea um, what's possible um, with this combining these two functionalities and how they can really make your life easier. I think there's also a video, yeah, there's a video on the on the bottom that um, also shows that um, what is depicted here in the blog post with screenshots on how to make use of that and how yeah life can be easier when you combine that. Then um, one last blog post from the area of SAP and Microsoft that I want to highlight. Um, I already highlighted one of the series. It's about building a Hyperledger fabric um, based on AKS um, and combining it with business technology platform. There is one, one new uh, blog post around that topic. So if you are dealing with uh, this, this blockchain uh, topics and want to use them with business technology platform and want to, to make, to leverage the Azure services, then I think this is a good stop to um, read and to see how things work. Now with that, I would like to switch to the topic of education and events. So I did not see any, any big topic or big event that, that's coming up, but there was um, something that's kind of um, interesting, I think. Um, the, the container solutions um, offer a free copy of the Cloud Native Transformation book that's um, published by O'Reilly. 
uh, for free. So you just have to register and as usual sign up for a newsletter. Um, but uh, that's the price to get the, the full edition of this book. I was really surprised. It's really the complete more than 500 pages book. So if you're interested in this topic of cloud native uh, transformation, I would say uh, go to that link, sign up and you get something to read for the weekend. Now, um, last topic for today, developer productivity. Um, there is one topic that crossed my path on Twitter um, that was highlighted by Helmut Thaman, also a well-known person in the SAP community who highlighted um, next.json generator. I think that's really helpful if you have to generate JSON files, for example, for testing, then this uh, online tool might really come in handy and help you to uh, generate quite extensive uh, JSON files that you can then use in order to test your application or in order to, to have some, some mock-up files. With that, yeah, I'm, I'm through with today's session. I hope I had some news for you um, from the world of SAP, Microsoft, or somewhere in between. And with that, I wish you a nice Friday. I wish you a nice weekend and hope to see you next week. Till then, bye.